Welcome everyone back to weekly weather updates and in today's video we're going to have a look at the latest from the live radar then we'll go through the GFS, the GM, the ECMWF, the GFS and ECMWF ensembles and we'll finish up having a look at the UK metaphors run have a look at the precipitation and temperature over the next five days. Now in yesterday's video we did have a look at the sudden stratospheric warming that was going to be taking place over the next week or so. On the model today, we perhaps are starting to see the first signs and extended range of maybe some impacts from that. Difficult to be, uh, to be certain, really. We are seeing more blocking patterns, perhaps, the westy momentum reducing as well on most of the uh, operational runs. So we could perhaps be seeing the first signs of things turning a little bit more disruptive, turning colder, perhaps, and you can even rule out some wintriness as well. So do remember, if you enjoy my videos, make sure you like and subscribe. And remember to follow me on Twitter as well, the link's in the description. So we start on the live radar. You can see at the moment we do have a bit of a small weather front moving into the far northwest through parts of Scotland, North Wales and northwest England. A few heavier showers down in the far southeast for, for many areas across England, Wales and the far north east of Scotland and far north of Scotland, it's a pretty beautiful day, I must say so indeed. We've got a lot of sunshine around. Yes, clouds are popping up, um, but it is beautiful out there. Temperatures are not crazy, sort of low teens, um, but it is feeling pretty warm out there. There is a bit of a breeze that does chill it down, but um, probably, in my opinion, it's been one of the best days so far this year in terms of beautiful sunshine. Feeling pleasant out there, um, definitely. But... Precipitation is moving in, and that's going to be happening over the next few days with more weather fronts pushing in, getting squeezed away and sort of stalling as high pressure does build in. Now, there's still a chance we do see easterly flows over the next week or two. There is still cropping up within the models, uh, but again, all depends on exact air masses because remember this time of year, uh, there are big warm air masses just to our south, but still very cold air masses to our north, so slight orientation shifts can bring big, big differences to our surface conditions. So we do now have a look at the GFS run, have a look at what that's showing over the next uh, two weeks. You can see we're in between high pressure systems at the moment, we've got low pressure trying to move in, bringing weather fronts. But you can see high pressure is building, but it doesn't fully build for before the, sort of the end of the week, uh, by some Thursday, Friday time. So even though generally we are under higher pressure, we still have weather fronts, some unsettled conditions, and some showers, and it will be quite slow moving as well. Not great. You can see, though, the core of the uh, tropospheric polar vortex is still over Greenland and Canada, and that's something to keep an eye on. Because as we go through this run, you'll see that that starts to shift and be displaced. And that's why I think we could be starting to see the first hints, perhaps, of some impact from the warming over the stratosphere and the weakening of the zonal winds um, high up in the atmosphere. So we do run through, though. You can see high pressure does build over the top of the UK, and we go into an easterly Flow. If we have a look at those upper air conditions, it is not amazingly cold. It's actually pretty mild upper air conditions, around or above average. But, coming in from the east, it's going to be chilly. Coming off quite a cold North Sea. Sea surface temperatures this time of year are almost at their coldest, really. It's sort of fe fe February, March time is when they're at the coldest, around 5 to 7 degrees. So, it is going to be dragging on some cooler air. Could be some mist around uh, as well with this. But it should generally be dry. Um, under the higher pressure with the best conditions with uh, lighter winds further northwards but of course with that you may get more overnight frost as temperatures do drop down significantly uh, this time of year beyond that though we still keep that easterly wind we could drag in some colder there temporary colder there temporarily it's also weekend but uh, it's not looking um, amazingly cold on this GFS run. Again, it all depends on the runs uh, and exactly where those air masses are positioned. You can see there is bitterly cold air across East Europe. Beyond that, though, we do see a brief breakdown in high pressure, a bit of a low pressure system move through. And then this is where perhaps signs of the tropospheric polar vortex starting to maybe see impacts in 10 days' time. You can see the sort of amplification of the jet stream, look over the northern hemisphere, you can see it's splitting apart all these blues now. If we go um, beyond that, you can see we actually go into a bit of a northerly flow temporarily, for high pressure does build up towards Greenland, and we actually go into a really quite cold north to northeasterly wind. Um, not amazingly cold, but pretty chilly this time of year. Look at those upper air temperatures. 
six to eight degrees below average with blocking over the north pole now this is day 10 to day 14 it's very uncertain things can change of course but perhaps this is the first signal we are seeing of the demise of the polar vortex for this winter perhaps as a result of the stratospheric warming and as all that cold air spills out of the arctic when when we see these high pressure systems build in um, over the arctic blocking developing it is likely that we do go cold for at least a period of time towards the end of march and perhaps the start of april this isn't too unusual but given the poor winter we've had for cold weather so far this could be sort of the the coldest conditions um in terms of feel like and perhaps even upper air conditions and general um wintry patterns so we'll have to see how it does play out just hints at this stage but um yeah following on from the stratospheric warming that we're seeing uh, i wouldn't say this is too uh too, too out there so do now have a look at the gm run see how that does compare again very similar over the next few days with high pressure building in and we do see easterly winds not massively cold as i said but uh, around next weekend we could be seeing some chillier air trying to push in for a period of time but nothing too crazy then we see a smaller pressure system move through with a bit of a colder air mass and then we see high pressure out of the atlantic now, of course, this only goes out to day 10, so we're not going to see the same impact as the GFS run, but you can see a bit of a split that purples are heading to the other side of the pole now. Look at that northern hemisphere view, you can see high pressure is trying to infiltrate into the Arctic. Across northern Canada, Alaska, towards Greenland, pressure is rising, um, and that could be a signal uh, for northerly winds. And now, this sort of chart doesn't look exceptional at this stage. But all this cold air is waiting the wings and it is heading towards Europe on this GM run. Ran, on, ran it on another couple of days, there would be a northerly blast. Whether the UK get directly impacted by it depends how far northwards and westwards this ridge does build of high pressure. But it's looking pretty cold regardless. Cold air spilling out of the Arctic. Again, perhaps the first signs of uh, impacts from the sudden stratospheric warming. But we'll have to see, of course, with that. So we do now have a look at the ECM WF run, see how that does compare. Again, high pressure is building in, but we are seeing periods of lower pressure trying to push in at times. And then we go to a bit of an easterly flow, nothing crazy, uh, just very similar to the other runs uh, for a couple of days with that easterly flow. Chillier air mass is possible for a time before we see a brief low pressure system and high pressure trying to build back in. Similar to the other runs, we are starting to see more application of the jet stream, perhaps infiltrating into the Arctic. But at this stage, not quite as much ridging towards the North Pole. Perhaps a bit more pessimistic and a bit more uh, reluctant to show anything blocking at day 10. But, of course, these are all just one runs, uh, one operational runs from each, uh, each of the models. Um, so we'll have to see exactly how it does play out. But perhaps there are now signals of maybe seeing signs of the stratospheric warming making some sort of impact for the last week of March into April. And it could really put a spanner in the works, bringing temperatures down. Perhaps if we did see a northerly blast, um, could be a little bit disruptive as well. So now, finally, for the mid-range forecast, have a look at the ensembles. Now, typically, you can see from the GFS ensembles, there is a massive, massive spread in ensembles. Um, now, you can see around freezing at the moment, rises significantly above by sort of Wednesday, Thursday time, we were perhaps looking at some milder conditions, but as we'll see with the UK Met Office run, there is going to be precipitation around, so that's going to hold temperatures down. We stay well above average all the way to around the 19th, 20th of March, before you see the average um, of all the ensemble members return to the 1981-2010 mean, and it pretty much stays there all the way to the end of March. You've got some real cold runs appearing, you've also got some quite mild runs appearing, and as I said, all depends on the orientation of the high pressure bringing up um, either southerly, southeasterly winds or east to northeasterly winds. Um, very much doubt we'll be seeing loads of westerly winds over the next couple of weeks. You never know, but it, looking at those deterministic the operational runs, it doesn't look too likely. But you can see the massive spread in air masses by around the 20th to 25th of March, and that's pretty typical. Uh, some of the runs going more of a colder easterly wind, others just going more of a sort of Monday, um, sort of milder easterly wind. Still chilly, but nothing too cold. If you have a look at those 2 metre temperatures, though, you can see widely temperatures are going to be around 14, 15, 16 degrees over the next couple of days, perhaps in sunshine. But we're going to see a drop after that to back around 9, 10, 11 degrees, feeling colder on some of those days with the easterly flow. And in the longer term, there is big spread. Some going 
bitterly cold with those upper air temperatures, bringing temperatures down into mid to low single digits. Others, high teens with uh, warmer upper air conditions moving in. Now, if we have a look at the ECMWF ensembles, you can see something very similar. Around average at the moment, then rising significantly above average over the next five days, and around the 20th to the 25th of March, around or maybe slightly above average, actually. Eastern Diff probably has warmer upper air conditions uh, than the GFS ensembles, but there are still a fair share of colder ones. In the longer term, around or maybe slightly above average for the uh, ensemble mean, but there are still plenty of cold runs, plenty of milder runs as well. Generally dry. Uh, for that amount of ensemble members, this is a pretty dry graph. So, high pressure generally still in control. But, as I said, so much spread in the longer term, because it all depends on that exact air direction. And I think, with the stratospheric warming taking place, we're going to be seeing a lot of chopping and changing within the models. So, do not expect any major consistency. Perhaps we're seeing some hints today that will disappear by tomorrow and return in a few days' time. You never know uh, with these stratospheric warmings because it is all sort of a domino effect. Um, and one, once one domino falls, the next one falls, and, and eventually the model will catch on to it and um, yeah, pick up on it a little bit better. Because at the moment, um, the, the warming hasn't really happened yet. So that sort of momentum hasn't really gone into, uh, or not really fed into the models too significantly um, yet. So we'll have to see exactly how that does play out. So we do finish the video by having a look at the UK Met Office run, have a look at precipitation temperature over the next five days. So you can see the precipitation moving in this afternoon, but you can see in between those showers in the far southeast and the precipitation further northwards, a slice of real pleasant spring sunshine across the Midlands, parts of Wales, and into the far east of Scotland and England. It does clear, and we see clear skies overnight for another weather front pushes in, mainly cloud initially, but then precipitation starts to move in by Tuesday afternoon into the evening for western parts across Ireland, Northern Ireland, and Western Scotland. That precipitation continues to move in, and a bit of precipitation peps up across England in the Midlands for our early hours of Wednesday, and that all clears by sort of Wednesday evening. A few showers still around. Um, again, exact timings are difficult, but it does look like Wednesday afternoon into the evening, we could be seeing that precipitation slowly uh, sort of fade away. For clear skies overnight Thursday, before more precipitation tries to move in from the far northwest, but dry conditions start to take over with higher pressure. Building in for Friday, Saturday time, and you can see that big high pressure to our east, a bit of an easterly flow, and it's going to mean chillier conditions in the far southeast, as we'll see in a minute. So we do have a look at those max temperatures. Just earlier this morning, it was pretty chilly indeed, but... By this afternoon, in the sunshine in the Midlands, 12, 13 degrees perhaps, um, but under showers and rain, only 5 or 6 degrees perhaps in a few areas over higher ground. Overnight tonight, could be seeing a frost for some under clear skies, and by tomorrow afternoon, we can see temperatures once again returning to 13, 14 degrees. Pretty, pretty present indeed, really. After that, for Tuesday night, maybe a frost across a few areas across Ireland and Scotland, and Wednesday afternoon. Could have been really pleasant, but where we have those warmer upper air temperatures, we also have a lot of cloud and rain around, so it's going to hold temperatures around low teens, feeling cold, of course, under cloud and rain. By Thursday morning, perhaps another frost across many central areas. Thursday afternoon, 12, 13 degrees. You can see these temperatures are slowly ramping up. And by Friday, frost in the north by Friday afternoon, perhaps 14, 15 degrees. Just shows you what a little bit of sunshine can do. And by early hours of Saturday, you can see temperatures are quite, uh, quite low single digits. But it'll be interesting to see what it is in the day. With that easterly flow, I suspect the far southeast will be feeling more around 8, 9 degrees. Where further northwards, perhaps 13, 14 degrees is possible. Um, and if we do have a look at the upper air temperatures, just to finish off... Um, from the UK out of this run. You can see they're not particularly cold even when we have that easterly flow, but coming in off a cold North Sea, it could feel chilly indeed. But anyway, thanks for watching. Hope you enjoyed. Subscribe if you're new, and I'll see you again for another video soon.